Awesome. <laughs> Can't wait. How are you feeling? Oh, I feel great. I feel great. How are you? I love, uh, good. I love you and I love our team. I love our church family. And, and, oh, um, thanks. Love you too. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and I receive it. <laughs> and I, I just uh, want to greet all of our global church members and, and friends and partners around the country and around yeah. the world. We're so, so glad to be connected and so grateful to be connected. And and as we've been saying for a year, over a year now, it's not how we connect, it's that we connect. Yeah. And I know we're, you just announced about May 2nd, which is going to be fantastic. Yeah. It's really going to be great. And um, so, so that, that's when we'll be on site and online. Exactly. And I can't exactly. wait to um, expand in both ways. I yeah. want us to all, always um, believe that God will enlarge our borders. And I want to encourage everybody. I just feel a burden to pray for people's healing right mm. now, in fact. Um, I know that's kind let's of random, it. but um, no, let's do it. it was just a great moment in worship, and I was just sensing one particular person that was on my heart, and I thought, well, God must have so many people on his heart that need a touch from him. And yeah. so I'm going to come into agreement with you and believe with you right now for your healing. And whatever it is, physical healing, emotional healing, relationship healing, People need healing in their finances. I mean, you'd be surprised how many people are stressed out and anxious over money and the matters that have to do with money and finances. And so I just pray right now, Father, we thank you that you are the God who heals. We thank you, Jesus, that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And you ever live to make intercession for us. You're standing in the gap. You are the bridge to answered prayer. You are the bridge to healing right now. You are the bridge to a miracle and a breakthrough that somebody needs right now. I just speak healing over people's bodies. I, I command brain cells to function properly. I, I speak a reversal of brain uh, illnesses and brain injuries. And I speak reversals of strokes that people have had. I speak reversals over nerve damage and, and cell damage in people's bodies. I speak healing over anyone with COVID. I speak healing over all your family members. I speak healing over your, over your body from the yeah. top of your head to the soles of your feet. I speak yeah. healing over your emotions in Jesus' name. I speak to the mountain of pain in your life and I command it to be removed and cast into the sea in the name of Jesus. I command every spirit of illness and infirmity to be bound and for the spirit of healing and the gifts of healing to be released in every person's life within the sound of my voice. Just receive that. You know, there's a promise in Galatians chapter three, verse five. It says, does he who gives the spirit, does he give it by the works of the law or by hearing with faith? And he that works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or does he do it by the hearing with faith? And of course, the answer is he does it by the hearing with faith. God does miracles. I love how he says he provides the spirit and works miracles among us, which is a, a present. That's a present thing that he's yeah. doing. He's yeah. working miracles among us even right now. And he doesn't do that because we've kept enough commandments. There's not enough to keep for your healing. There's not enough commandment. We all fail. We all blow it. It's the mercy and the grace of God that offers us this beautiful gift of healing. This miracle that you need is um, is by hearing a promise from God's word and taking it by faith yeah. and receiving it by faith. Yeah. And I loved what you said earlier um, when you were praying, you're like, Lord, we don't just look at the your word as ancient scriptures. Yeah. We we believe your word. Yeah, I'm so proud of you for like Thanks. a lot of people in your generation, the younger crowd doesn't you know, they're not sure about the power of God's word, but boy, I've I found it in young, at a young age in my life that God's word was true. Yep. And I found it now in my older age that God's word is true. And he's yeah. he's been the same the whole time. And yeah. he's loved me and loved you and loved us all through it the whole time. Yeah. And I'm very grateful for that. So, um, yeah, yeah awesome. so we're going to dive into some stuff today. Go. We're going to do some uh, some some sort of rapid fire, aren't yeah. we? Yeah, I'm excited about it. Uh, it's been a, a, a cool um, series, you know, talking about things that Jesus said to Peter. Um, and, you know, so I, I will summarize uh, the, the past points that we've gone over so far. But then, uh, like I said, we're going to go kind of a little bit of rapid fire. Yeah. Um, just to to breeze through because there's there's a ton of goodness in this. And so we want to 
make sure we're we're getting all of it. Yeah, um, and I found a few more. So right, you know, accidentally <laughs> stumbled over a couple. Of extras. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so um, just for review sake, uh, we started with you know, and th these are kind of my paraphrased uh, um, points. So I hope you don't mind, Dad. Yeah. But um, we started with number one, I'm making you into something. Uh, that's what Jesus said, and he was talking about making um, Peter a fisher of men, not just fisher of fish. Number two, launch into the deep. Uh, and I have here, trust his way over what's always worked. Um, that, that speaks for itself. So Number good. three, I am calling you something new. Uh, he changed his name to Peter, which is the rock, um, and the rock that the church will be built upon. Um, Number four, fear not. Man, I love that one. Yeah. Number five, come. It's yours for the taking. I, I, I just think when we were going over this point, that's something that was sticking out to me. Like, it's yours for the taking. And it's yeah. the same with what we, what we were talking about with scripture. Yeah. I feel like... It's, it's, uh, it's for us to believe. It's for yeah. us to stand on and to declare. So, that's, and I mean, to receive it. Come freely yeah. and receive it freely. Come boldly to the throne yep. of grace to receive his mercy and grace. Yep, 100%. And then obviously I went over this one when we were talking about giving, but uh, everything you give for the kingdom's sake has a 100-fold return. So I love that one yeah, as well. From uh, Jesus. So it's Jesus' words, exactly, not ours. Exactly. And it's so encouraging, you know, knowing that someone's, like Jesus is always watching and not in a in a guilt way, but like he always notices the things in the in the dark moments and the secret moments of, you know, encouragement, of serving, of that heart sacrifice of just God, I'm I'm living for you, I'm doing this for you, you know. Mm, so, so good. He said when you give in secret, he'll reward openly. Mm, like God's interested in openly rewarding yeah. us. And uh, we don't get praise, we don't we're not looking for our praise from man. Right. We're looking, not looking for our approval from man. We're looking at, for our praise from God when we walk in faith and do what honors him. The Bible says it's that faith that pleases God. Yeah. And, um, and he, he wants to reward you openly yeah. when you give and when you trust him. He wants to reward people. That's awesome. And he wants to show the world uh, his character, yeah. which is love. His, he is love. God is love and his greatest characteristic of love is generosity. Yeah. You were talking about it earlier. To, the generosity of God is outrageous. Mm. It's, it's, uh, it's unparalleled. It's, it's, it's changed my life. And I, I just welcome God to keep changing my life for the better, <laughs> to understand more and more how generous and how kind and how good he actually is. Yeah, for sure. And I was just going to say about re rewarding openly, I remember watching VeggieTales as a kid, and there was this episode where this, this guy, like, I don't know, some character that was supposed to be like a wise sage. And he was like, uh, he who exalts himself will be humbled, but he who humbles himself will be exalted. Yeah. And like, I can hear it in my head. That's it. That's great. That's like all we could watch when we were kids. But uh, that's <laughs> yeah, another story sorry. for another time. Um, <laughs> but no, like that, that's so true. You know, like uh, when we try to openly praise ourselves or seek that, then, you know, we naturally will reach that humility. Um, by force, you know, but when we right. can humble ourselves, then God's all about that. So I just wanted to touch on that. And for any of my fellow VeggieTale fans, yeah, that's for you guys. Um, it's, it's so good. <laughs> right? It's so good. So let's get into this. Um, our seventh point, uh, seventh thing that Jesus said to Peter that I have on here, and we're going to dive into this, is have faith in God. So can you break that down yeah, for us? Yeah, Mark 11, um, I think that's Mark 11, verse 22. 21 and 22. 20, 21, yeah. 22, 23, 21, where uh, Peter says, look at, look, Jesus, look at the, the, the fig tree that you cursed. It, it died. Mm. And Jesus said, have faith in God. And he said, and then it, which leads to something that he said that is the most well-known verse on faith, I think, that, that, that of any verse about faith, which is, if you shall say to the mountain, be removed, mm. whosoever shall say to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, and does not doubt, but believe that what he says shall be granted him, it sh believes that what he says shall be granted, it shall be done for him. Um, whatsoever things you believe when you pray, believe you have received them, and they'll be granted to you. So in that statement that Jesus makes to Peter, because Peter notices the tree, Jesus had cursed it earlier, and said, may no one eat fruit from you again, and it died. Right. From the, it withered up from the roots up. Right. And, and Peter noticed that, and he, 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 he pointed that out to Jesus, and Jesus said, have faith in God. Mm. But there are other translations that I 
wrote down that yeah. our really powerful translation of this verse, when he says, have faith in God, he says in the Dewey realms, the Dewey Rames Bible, and Jesus answering saith to them, have the faith of God. Mm. Now, this is something we talked about the last couple of weeks yep. when we talked about how Jesus said to Peter, I prayed for you that your faith will not fail. And it's not our faith is not just in the Son of God. We have the faith of the Son of God. He yeah. gives us his faith. It's all it's everything we have is is it, we can attribute it all to God. Yeah. He gets all the glory because he did all the giving. Yeah. And even our faith, he gave us that. Mm. And here he says, it's, it, it's read as he says to Peter and to the other disciples in this case, have faith in God. But it's really translated most literally, have the faith of God. Yeah. And That's then cool. in the Aramaic Bible, which is the language that Jesus spoke in Aramaic and Chaldean and Greek, he says, Yeshua answered and he said to them, may the faith of God be in you. May the faith of God be in you. So have the faith of God. Like we can have the same faith that Jesus had. We can have the same faith that God has because we have the same words that God, mm. that God spoke. God spoke his words. God believes in his words. Yeah. And he gave us his words so we can believe in his words. Not only do we have his words, but we have his faith to believe his words. It yeah. all comes from God. So we, we need to take the pressure off of ourselves that we have to muster up all this faith mm. when really he's telling us we can have the faith of God. We can have the same faith he has, which is really simple faith. He says it and he believes it. He says what he believes and he believes what he says. Yeah. That's the kind of faith God has. Yeah. He says what he believes and he believes what he says. And we can have that same faith because he said, have the faith of God, have the same faith that God has, which is believe what we say and say what we believe. Let's say what we believe. The Bible says the spirit of faith speaks. Mm. So we we say what we believe. See, a lot of times people have forgotten. A lot of Christians have either never been taught this or they've forgotten that there's power in our words. Yeah. And it really isn't hard to con come to that conclusion if you are a, a, a logical person, if you just think logically. When you talk to somebody, if you speak encouraging words, you lift the room. Yeah. When you speak discouraging words, you, you kind of, you, you reign on the party, you reign <laughs> on the parade. Right. Our words have that kind of power. That's right. And we can prove it in every area of life. When you encourage a young kid with words, they get excited. When you, when you discourage a kid, they, they lose heart. When we speak over ourselves, we can be happier by just speaking, you know, positive words of faith, words of God's promise. It, it, somebody asked me once, are you a uh, are you a positive thinker? Are you one of those positive thinker preachers? And I said, well, if the alternative is to be a negative thinker <laughs> preacher, then, yeah, I'm a positive thinker preacher because right. <laughs> I'd rather be speaking positive things than negative things yeah. because God's a God of yes and amen. Yeah. All of his promises are yes. And with us is the amen. So we just need to have here's how we can have the faith of God by simply believing the words of God. Yeah. If Jesus said you can speak to this mountain, be removed and cast in the sea, I take that and I say, OK, I'm going to do that yeah. because that's the faith that God has, and that's the faith that we can have, because he wouldn't tell us to have the faith of God if we couldn't have it. Yeah. So be encouraged, everybody, that you can have the faith of God by just speaking what God says. Get your words in alignment. Get your words inside your brain in alignment with God's word, and get your words coming out of your mouth in alignment with God's words, and that is how you activate the God kind of faith. Yeah, and I just, just quickly on that, I think we understand the concept of speaking over other people or speaking to other people or maybe j even just observing something disconnected to us and oh that sucks or oh that's that that's bad or whatever like we're we're good at that but yeah. we forget that we actually can do that over ourselves like we we might have negative thoughts toward ourselves and not even realize it that's right just how we're in habit of you know being observers of like okay yeah this is negative in our world or this is like this person is really throwing off my vibe or whatever like we just as much as that can be natural to us it's natural to us to to uh deprecate ourselves self-deprecate ourselves and we don't realize it you know and maybe that's more of a humor term but i'm just saying like yeah no I, we I have these you. negative thoughts over ourselves and we don't realize that those thoughts just have they have just as much power and can really change and dictate what happens in our lives you yeah know? it really so does it, it could be easy to understand oh yeah sure i should i should be careful with my words towards others 
but it's another level to think I need to be careful with my words to myself. And we actually can speak to the mountains in ourselves, the, the, the mountains of, you know, of pressure, anxiety, or um, a situation in our lives. We have the power to, to we be really able to do. activate our faith and we speak really over do. those things in ourselves. So, and when we speak over our own personal lives, I just want people to understand this is scientifically proven that when we speak f- positive, faith-filled words over our, over our bodies, over our minds, over our emotions, it changes our brain. It rewires our yeah. brain. We actually are reprogramming or rewiring our brain. It's been proven scientifically. Psychiatrists, medical professionals, uh, people that study the brain and study the, the waves, the electromagnetism and all the things that go on in the brain, <laughs> they've proven this to be very powerfully true, that our words actually change the nature of our brain, our bodies, our condition. And um, so have the faith of God by speaking the words of God. Boom. Yeah, Easy. there you go. All right, number eight, going to the next point. Uh, Jesus said who, in Matthew 16, 15, who do you say that I am? Right, so in Matthew chapter 16, verse 15, I believe, uh, first he had said to the disciples, to all of them, who do people say that mm-hmm. I am? And they said, some say you're John the Baptist, some say you're Elijah, some say you're one of the prophets. And then he got really specific, and then he said, okay, I, I understand what, what everybody else says I am, but what do you say? What do you say? Who do you say that mm-hmm. I am? And really, life, everything in life boils down to this question. Who do you say cool. that Jesus is? Who do you say that Jesus is? When you said Jesus is Lord, you got saved. Mm. When you declared, the Bible says in Romans 10, 9, If we confess with our mouth Jesus as Lord and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we'll be saved. So so when we said Jesus is Lord, it activated salvation in our lives. So the most important thing about our lives is what we say about Jesus, because what we say about him is going to dictate what we believe about ourselves. Because when we're born again, we're made in the image of God, recreated in the image of God. So but this concept of who do you say? He gets specific. Who do you say that I am? And yeah. Peter says, now he says that to all of us. Who do, who do you say that I am? But then Peter spoke up and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. You're the Messiah. You're the Christ. You're the anointed one. And Jesus said to him, behold, he said, blessed are you. You see, when, when you say what God says, mm. Who do you say that I am? We're either going to get we're going to either agree with what the world says about Jesus, what religion says about Jesus, right, right. what the devil might say about Jesus, what other people's opinions might say about Jesus, or we're going to believe what God says about Jesus. Yeah. God says Jesus is the Christ. God says Jesus is Lord. So when Peter says, "You're the Christ, you're the son of the living God." He was saying what God said. He was getting his words in agreement with God's words. He actually believed what God believed. He had the faith of God here. And he says, you're the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus immediately conferred blessing upon him. He said, blessed are you. So by saying, by really getting a personal revelation that Jesus is the Christ, that Jesus is Lord. Jesus isn't your savior and Lord because... I'm telling you to make him your Savior and Lord. Right. Jesus is your Savior and Lord because at some point you, made, you took him personally. You had a personal revelation yeah. of Jesus being the Christ, yeah. Jesus being who he, who he actually is. And I was going to mention that because, you know, being someone that grew up in, in church and in a Christian family, obviously, um, you know, it's very, like, I think everyone kind of has this sort of, of uh, not issue, but just this sort of upbringing where, you're, you connect your faith to your family's faith or to your parents' faith or to yeah. your church's faith. If you grew up in, in kids' church, you kind of, you know, go through the motions and you, under, you have an understanding, but, you know, there comes a day where it has to become personal to you. That's right. Um, and so that's, that's kind of what I loved about this is where, you know, it doesn't matter necessarily if, if other people get it. Jesus cares about, like, what do you, like who do you say that I am? Who am I, who am I to you personally? That's right. And when, you, when we have that personal conviction and that personal relationship, with Jesus for ourselves rather than filtered through religion, like you said, or just through other things that we've heard through the years, 
we that's when the blessing comes. That's when that's we, right. we experience the truest relationship with Jesus and all of the benefits of it because it's, really good. it's between me and him rather than me through someone else and him. That's right. And that's exactly, I mean, you said it perfectly. And Jesus <laughs> said, I bless you. There's a blessing on your life now because you, you're not telling me what the crowd says I am. Mm. You're not telling me what religion says I am. You're telling me what you personally believe. You yeah. are the Christ, the son of the living God. Peter had a personal revelation. Yeah. Like a, a revelation is different than information. I think it's important people understand, gang, we want to get this, that, that information is a bunch of facts and a bunch of content. But revelation is when God makes you aware of something that nobody can talk you out of. Mm. So like that's awesome. That anybody could say any any preacher could stand up today and, and get on television and all the most famous preachers could say we don't believe in Jesus and I don't believe in Jesus anymore. nobody should believe in Jesus anymore. That wouldn't affect me. I'd be I'd be sad for them, but it wouldn't affect me because I'm not basing my faith. My relationship with God is based on a somehow God opened up the eyes of my heart mm. and caused me to see he was real. And that's why Paul prayed in Ephesians. He said, I pray that the eyes of your heart mm. would be enlightened. Yeah. And when the eyes of your the eyes of your heart are different than the eyes of your body, the, our eyes of our body sees one thing, but the eyes of our heart see something that's invisible to the naked eye, to the natural eye. And that is a revelation. So when I got saved, I knew Jesus had done something in my life yeah. and nobody could talk me out of that. Yeah. I can be talked out of a lot of things <laughs> in life if somebody's persuasive enough, but I can't be talked out of the things that God has revealed to me from scripture and by his spirit, which is always in agreement with love because God is love. And so I just want to encourage it. everybody to Let's not let, let's realize the difference between information and revelation. So Jesus said, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. If you guys can put that verse up where he says in verse 16, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father in heaven revealed it to you. Mm. So he said, you're blessed because flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. You're blessed because you've your eyes have been opened by the father. Yeah. And I pray right now for the eyes of every person yeah. watching right now or hearing within the sound of my voice connecting in some way. I pray that the eyes of your heart and the eyes of your soul, the eyes of your spirit would be opened to see Jesus as the Christ, to see Jesus as Lord, to see Jesus as bigger than your situation, bigger than the mountain, bigger than the problem, bigger than anything that you're facing bigger than anything you'll ever face. I pray that the eyes of your heart would have a revelation of who Jesus really is. Yeah. He said, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my father in heaven. Yeah, it's powerful words. Awesome. And that's why I love our church, because we don't just do things uh, out of tradition and out of because we were told to and because it's the right thing to do. Yeah. Everything we do, whether it's, you know, like, I mean, obviously the message, uh, the word that, that's preached in our church, the worship, the, the spirit of and the heart of worship in our church, the spirit of giving in our church, it's all built and based on that personal revelation, that personal experience yes. um, where we know this works. That's and so right. that's why that's why we're passionate. That's right. That's why we want to get other people to experience it because we know it works personally. It's not just a, a forum or something that we have to go go through just because we call ourselves Christian, you know. And so that's why our church is awesome. So a little brag moment. No, I love um, that. And a, and a, and a like you know a perspective. You know, this is why we do what we do. It's because we know it's worked in our lives. It like, has. And we want other people to experience that. And there was so, a man that was born blind, and his, and and Jesus healed him, and and. They said um, to him, well, was it this man's sin or was it his parents' sin that he was born blind? And Jesus said, no, it's not about anybody's sin. It's about this is going to turn into the glory of God. Mm -hmm. And so they they asked him um, what happened to him and because the religious Pharisees wanted to catch him and they wanted to criticize his healing. And this guy got his, his he was blind and they, they said to him. How did he make you see? How could he do that? And, and, and the guy, the blind man said, look, 
I don't know all of your questions. I don't have an answer to all of your questions on how this happened and how that happened. But this one thing I know, I once was blind and now I see. Yeah. And that's there's no argument against that. Yeah. The man was blind and now he sees. And that's his argument. I once was blind and now I see. As for whether, you know, he's this or he's that or you think this about him or you think that about him is irrelevant. I was blind. Now I see I was broken. Jesus touched me. Yeah. I'm still in the process. Of, we're all still in the process of being restored sure. more, more and more fully as day by day. But I was broken. Yeah. I'm healed. Yeah. I was unloved. I didn't feel loved. He loved me. Yeah. I didn't feel uh, confident, but he made me sure yeah. about his promises and about his love and about his goodness. And of that, I'm certain. Awesome. And Paul said, I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor height nor depth nor any other creature, nothing can separate us from the love of God, yeah. which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Whew. I'm convinced, he said, I'm persuaded. May everyone live their life based on the fact that they're persuaded fully mm. about what they believe and not just, like you said, listening to the winds of religion and the winds of media and the winds of this world. Let's be persuaded by God. Yeah. And that, and God meets us where we're at. He meets us he where we're at. He doesn't demand you to act a certain way and give a certain amount or you got to be 100% Christian before I can reach you. Like he meets us where we're at. And that's, we welcome everyone in our church. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to have it all together because we don't have it all together and it's we're not perfect. Yeah. But he meets us there. And that's, you know, at, like you said, it's a process and he, he brings us on that journey. So, uh, and he doesn't want anything to happen unnaturally. He doesn't want you to, to serve him because you're told to. He wants it to be Pers persuasion, personal persuasion, personal revelation. So that's right. And there's to... nothing that can persuade you more than love. Yeah. And there's nothing God's trying to prove to you more than the fact that he loves you. That yeah. is the number one thing that God wants you to be persuaded of it's awesome. his love. Awesome. Yeah, I'm loving this content. That's and great. just a reminder for you guys, uh, the reason why we're going into this is because we identify with Peter, you know, he's an imperfect guy. And Jesus, you know, uh, really discipled him in, in these in these passages of scripture that we have access to. And so we just love breaking it down and, and applying it to our lives. And this has also become like the DNA of our church, pretty yeah. much the DNA of our culture. So I love getting into this. That's why we're doing this. And so. you're being personally discipled right now. 100%. We're personally discipling you. And this is what everybody should want as a Christian is to be discipled, not disciplined like right. you were bad, shame on you, but discipled like here's the way to go. Here's what God means. Here's how to pray. Here's how to believe. Here's how to take God at his word. And that's what's happening right now. You're being discipled, lovingly being discipled and becoming a real great student. You're already a child of God when you're born again. Nothing's going to change that. Nothing's going to take that away. But now we can be incredible student leaders and servants and learn how to really lead from a place of understanding. And that's what Jesus is teaching Peter. And that's what we're learning too. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Love it. So we're going to keep going. Uh, number nine, our next thing that Jesus said to Peter is, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. I know we kind of talked about that earlier with, you know, him changing his name to Peter, but this is kind of further in depth and it's in Matthew 16, uh, verse 16. So it's really break important it down for us. that we get a hold of this is Peter, like my, my Catholic brothers and sisters out there think you know, they believe that Peter was the first pope. And this is what this is when Jesus sort of initiated making him the, the first pope. I don't I don't see that in the Bible, but I'm not going to fight you about that because we should focus on what we agree about, not what we disagree about. Yeah. But I want to point out that this is such an important verse because he says he says, you're Peter, you're a small stone. I've changed your name from a reed blowing in the wind, a, a branch blowing in the wind right. to Peter, a stone, a rock. And upon this rock, yeah. he says, so you're a rock, but upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. The rock that he's saying he's going to build his church on is the revelation that he's the Christ. So Peter sh shares the revelation and Jesus said, flesh and blood didn't reveal that to you, but my father revealed that to you. And that's what that's the rock mm. that Jesus is building his church upon. Jesus isn't building his church upon Peter because Peter can fall and Peter can stumble and Peter denied the Lord three times. Right. Peter's not the rock that he builds his church upon. 
the revelation that Peter had mm. is the rock that Jesus built his church upon because there's two different words. Peter is a little stone, but then he says in the, in the Aramaic language, Peter is the definition is a little stone. But then he says upon this rock, which is a bedrock, mm. that's that word rock is translated as bedrock upon this bedrock. I will build my church. God's building his church upon us having personal revelation that Jesus is the Christ. And that's what God is building his church upon. And when we our lives are built upon Christ, our lives are built upon what Jesus Christ did for us. Awesome. Our lives are built upon the finished work of Christ, the finished work of the cross. So when our lives are built upon the Christ, the finished work of the Messiah, then the gates of hell mm. cannot prevail against our lives when we're established on not on Peter. We're not established on a person. We're established on a revelation that Jesus is the Christ that suffered, died and was buried. And on the third day he rose again. That is called the word of Christ. That's awesome. Faith comes from hearing the word of Christ and the word of Christ is he suffered, died and was buried. And on the third day he rose again. That is the revelation. You have a revelation of that. You weren't there. I wasn't there, but I have a revelation. Yeah, I know that Jesus rose from the dead. I'm a I'm proof. You're proof. God's fingerprints, the resurrection's fingerprints are all over our lives. The DNA of his resurrection power is all over our lives. The evidence of fingerprints, the the proof is there that his resurrection is real and people who build their lives on the fact that Jesus did it all. Jesus did it all. He paid the full price for your salvation, for your relationship with God, for your healing, deliverance, freedom. Yeah. He paid for all of that with his precious blood so that now the, even the gates of hell, no matter what hell brings against you, it can't prevail against you yeah. because your life is built upon this revelation that Jesus is the Christ who suffered, who died, who rose from the dead. That is the revelation that 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 hell itself cannot prevail against. If you build your life upon keeping a bunch of rules, hell can prevail against that. If you build your life upon mm. some feeling that you have, hell can prevail against yeah. that. But you but if you build your life upon what Jesus Christ did on the cross, the finished work, it is finished, tetelestai, the gates of hell cannot prevail against that. That's awesome. You can't be stopped when you build your life upon that sure foundation. Jesus the Christ, it is finished. Yeah, great. I think that's really great clarification to Good. that point. Yeah. And I mean, that's that's hitting me because uh, it's not just Jesus doesn't build the church just on one person. And right. OK, yes, now you represent or you like everyone will look to you. It's about that revelation that's and exactly the truth right. and the principle. But when we stand on that and when we are when we, you know, um, get that, then we can be we can be the church for other people and we plant ourselves in the house and we flourish, you know, so totally. I think there's a lot there, but there's so I think, much there. I think we get we get the point. I yeah. mean, you know, we could talk forever on all of these. Well, um, I just want to make one more point about yeah, that, please, uh, because I just want believers, you know, my brothers and sisters and the, the family of God out there. Yeah. Believe in the authority that you've been given. In fact, that's I think we can close on that point. Isn't Let's that the it. next one? The next thing Jesus said to Peter is I will. He said, um, and the keys, I give you I'll the give keys you, of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth shall have been bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth shall have been loose in heaven. I'll give you the keys of the kingdom awesome. of heaven and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. And let me talk about the, that for a moment, because yeah because people get that mixed up, right? This authority is activated by a, when you're born again and you use your words like we talked about earlier, how powerful our words are, our words of faith. He's saying whatever we bind on earth, that word bind means to forbid. So whatever we forbid on earth is forbidden in heaven. And whatever we loose, that, that word means to permit. Mm. Whatever we loose, whatever we permit, on earth will be permitted in heaven. In other words, we have been given a measure of authority. A lot of Christians believe that God is sovereign over everything, hmm. which means they interpret that to mean 
that God is in control of everything. But God is certainly not in control of everything because God has given mankind control of many things. Right. Now, God is in control of, of many things, but then he's given control to us over many things. Yeah. He told Adam and Eve to, to rule the earth, subdue the earth, and, and uh, have dominion in the earth. And they failed, and they gave their power to Satan, and Jesus came and paid for it in his blood and took the authority back, mm -hmm. and he gives it to us. Yep. And it starts all over again, like we're in the Garden of Eden all over again, and we have the authority to keep the serpent out of our minds, out of our thoughts, out of our lives. Mm. And whatever we bind on earth, we have authority that heaven is... We're, so many Christians are waiting for heaven to do something for us, but heaven is waiting to hear from us. Mm. When in James chapter 5, it says, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much, and he talks about... And then he said... For you have the same nature, the man, Elijah the prophet was a man with a nature like yours, like ours. And he prayed, and it didn't rain for three and a half years. Then he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain. Gave rain. When, Eli when Elijah prayed, he didn't say, oh God, oh God, stop the rain, oh God, stop the rain, oh God, stop the rain. That's not how he prayed. He prayed like this scripture in Matthew chapter 16, that we have authority. He prayed, until I say so, by the name of the Lord, it's not going to rain until my word releases rain. And then three and a half years later, he released the rain. He prayed again. And the Bible says in James 5, 18, and heaven gave the, the heavens gave rain wow. when Elijah prayed. So heaven wasn't telling Elijah, pray for rain and don't pray and then pray for it to stop raining, pray for rain. Elijah told heaven. Now, I'm not saying we go and boss God around. We yeah. don't go and tell heaven what to do. But yeah. heaven has already given us this authority. Yeah. Then we activate it on earth. And whatever we activate on earth is activated in heaven. Whatever we allow on earth is allowed by heaven. If I, allow, if I allowed you to grow up a different way, that wouldn't have been because of God. That would have been because of what I allowed while, mm -hmm. while you were in my house, while you were under my authority and my care and your mother's, that, that would have been on us. That wouldn't have been on God. It's because whatever we allowed, heaven allowed. Mm. Heaven supported our raising you God's way, but heaven would have, you know, taken their hands back and heaven would have been like, okay, if you're going to raise him and you put him on drugs and you're going to, you know, show him all the bad stuff that's in this world and, 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 and feed him all the negativity, we're, we're, heaven can't interfere with that because whatever we allow, heaven allows. Yeah. And whatever we forbid, heaven forbids. Yeah. In other words, I want people to understand, heaven is ready to back you up. Right. God and heaven is ready to back you up. When you speak to the mountain, be removed, heaven's going to back you up. When you say to your body, I command my body to come in line with the word of God, be healed from the top of my head to the sole of my feet. I just speak favor over my life. I speak open yeah. doors yeah. over my life. When you start talking like that, yep. heaven backs you up. Yeah. Heaven and heaven doesn't get in the way when you say, I'm never going to make it. I'm never going to make it. I'm never going to make it. Heaven's going to just allow you to never make it because you're allowing you to never make mm, it. Yeah. But if you're saying, I declare that I'm going to make it and doors are opening for me and, and I'm blessed coming in and blessed going out and I'm the head and not the tail above only and not beneath. When we start activating heaven's promises, yep. heaven backs us up. Yep. That's what I want to end with today. And I think I want people to get that. I think what you're saying disarms the theory or the belief that God is in control of everything that happens to us. You know, anything that, anything that comes our way, oh, it's God's fault. Blame God, blame God. We've been given the keys. We've been given the authority through righteousness. So therefore we have power to like, just as God gave us free will to make our own choices, he's given us the power to speak over everything in our in our life in in this world in this earth in this world and heaven will back us like you said and that's I think right. that's huge and if you if 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 you have if you give the keys of your car to somebody that person is now no longer in control of the car you are in control of the car because you gave them they gave you their keys or whoever you give the keys to that person is in control of the car we're in control of some power yeah because god has given us the keys yeah now we can drive our bodies into the dirt and into the and into the traffic coming on, we could drive ourselves in the wrong direction, but when, because we have God's word, we can drive ourselves in the right direction. Yeah. And we can use our keys to go to the places that God wants us to go and impact this world. And we can demand that heaven, 
you know, supports us and backs us. Because we're putting a demand on the supply right. exactly. that God already offered. Yep. Yeah, He already offered it. We're placing a demand on it. By the way, you're watching right now, and I know we've got to uh, wrap up, but you may be watching and never, you've never accepted Jesus as the Christ, the Son of God, as your Savior and Lord. Let's pray right now. And I want to just lead you in the simple prayer. Just pray this out loud. Heavenly Father, just pray that out loud. You want to be saved. You want to be sure you're going to heaven when you die. Heavenly Father, I believe Jesus died for my sins and rose from the dead. Just say that out loud from this moment forward. I'm a child of God. The blood of Jesus cleanses me from all my sins. Amen. Do you know salvation is that simple? We made it so hard. Christians have made it so hard. God made it simple. Come on. And that's how simple it is. If you prayed that prayer, I got a gift for you. You can download this for free anywhere in the world. Get our book, The Power of a New Life. And Congratulations if you yeah. prayed that. Let us know. I'd love to hear from you, and I honor you, and I thank God for you. You're part of the family of God now. Congratulations, and we'll see everybody Sunday. Yeah, we love you guys. And just a quick mention, PGD did this without any notes tonight, so <laughs> that's pretty epic. Just scripture off the dome, off the cuff the head of his head. It's Thanks. amazing. So thank you for My leading pleasure. us. We love you guys. We'll love see you, you on Sunday. It's going to be great. Take care. Can't Enjoy wait. the rest Online of your week. Online everywhere. Woo!